we call it technical debt quite often. Yes. I think, I think people have this tendency to think of it as technical, not debt. And for me, holding on to, we can do this, we could do it properly. The impact that you're avoiding is almost always time or cost, which are both cost. And someone should be paying somewhere. Whether we pay today or pay in the future, it's it's still debt. I'm, I'm glad you raised technical debt because no, I'm totally with you. And I've almost, almost got to the point now where I'm gonna start calling it organizational debt. Mm. Because actually it's not always technical. It's sometimes business decisions. Yeah. It can be M&A, right? It can be a, a merger where they decide not to fully integrate the HR structure. Well, fine. But then that has implications on the technology. Like you're a, you've now got multiple ADs or a complicated forest or whatever it might be. And actually you could, you know, someone might go, well, that's technical data. I go, well, actually, no, because the business imposed certain constraints on us. Um, or it might be that we just they decided that not to automate a process because of the cost of doing that. Well, that was an organizational decision. So I, I think the debt piece is really helpful because it helps you understand that, you know, the financial kind of analogy is if you just keep spending, you, your credit card just gets maxed out. And yeah. um, I don't think we really, I think, I, well, I totally agree with you. I don't think we play enough on that debt bit. People kind of get hung on with, as soon as anyone heads the word technical, they go, oh, well, I don't understand it. Um, or, you know, some people do. I'm being, making a sweeping generalization. And I think you're right. I think almost project debt or program debt or organizational debt might be a better term. And then within that, there, yes, there's technical debt. There's decisions where a programmer put something together and they didn't, you know, fully break down the, you know, the code. So it was properly object orientated or, there was a project to integrate two systems and they decided to use CSV rather than an API. This, there definitely is technical debt, but then there's also debt that we've just sort of had to carry because the business has wanted us to do something that we're perhaps not 100% happy with. And I think we, um, we have challenges today around um, how hard it is for the wrong owner to understand the debt. And I think when you, when you try and split out um, who's created it, what the reason behind it was and what we do to get out of it. If it's in the wrong place, it, it just accumulates. And you know, we both said, if you call it technical debt, it naturally it gets put onto IT teams. Where if you can- You show, fix it. It's your yeah, problem, guys. Yeah. If you can show that there's organizational debt versus IT debt, and often one, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a technical debt record, one of those could be split into one each of organizational and IT debt. Um, you you get traction, right? If you hand everything that might be called technical debt to an IT department, I guarantee almost anyone's going to be overwhelmed because it will be a long list. Mm. And it'll be a long list of things that they don't have the skills to fix. Um, or, the, or the manpower and budget because no one's really recognised how big of a problem it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the number of times you end up in conversations in, in architecture of, you know, if you gather that information when you hire someone, we can automate that process down the line that gets translated into, well, we don't automate new hires and it's an IT issue.